Women are rising. They are building businesses, writing books, starting nonprofit organizations, and impacting this world like never before. What happens when these women share their stories about success? Well, you're about to find out. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Rising Stories Podcast. I'm Kareen Sandifer, your host. And on Rising Stories, we feature women who are changing their world. We interview authors, influencers, speakers, and business owners, and we talk about best business practices. We also talk about productivity tips and what we are reading, and sometimes our favorite apps. Today, we are continuing our new series featuring the women of Belmont University. Belmont University is a private liberal arts university in Nashville, Tennessee, and is home to the only international accredited music business program in the world. On this episode, I am talking with Dr. Cheryl Carr, Associate Dean and Associate Professor at Belmont University's Mike Kerb College of Entertainment and Music Business. Dr. Carr, a former entertainment and intellectual property attorney, has written the book, Music Business Careers. She and I talk about music on Music Row, we talk about Belmont, and the question that everyone in music should answer. What will you do with music? So if you or someone in your life wants to go into the music industry, this show is a must listen. She has some awesome questions you need to ask yourself about going into this career. She also answers all of my fun questions about her favorite Nashville restaurant and what books she is reading now. But before we get started, I want to let you know how you can support the show. If you hear about a book or product on the show, please use uh, the links provided in the show notes to make your purchase. Amazon will give us a portion of every item you purchase with our links. You can also find more great stuff on our Amazon store, which is amazon.com backslash shop backslash Kareen Sandifer. There you will find all of my fun and favorite picks. Here is my conversation with Dr. Cheryl Carr. Hi, Cheryl. Thanks so much for joining us. Hi, Corinne. It's my pleasure. I am super excited to talk with you. It was one of those, like, I can't believe I got her on the show, especially (laughs) because I'm doing a bit of a Belmont group of podcasts, and I thought, oh my word, this is awesome that I could get uh, the dean of the College of Entertainment and Music Business. So I'm super excited to hear from you and what you are doing there at Belmont. I'm super excited to share that. And and let me just say, I'm actually the Associate Dean. So if our Dean happens to hear this podcast. (laughs) Correction, Associate. (laughs) I want him to know, I'm not trying to steal his job. Um, I'm the Associate Dean for the College of Entertainment and Music Business and Associate Professor of Music Business at Belmont. And Cheryl, are you a doctor? Are you, do you have so a I, I have a Juris Doctor degree, mm-hmm. uh, and therefore, um, it, it, in an academic setting, to um, bear the title doctor is not inappropriate. Um, and in fact, when I first made the transition from private practice of law to academia in Belmont, I was curious about this, and I actually did some research with the American Bar Association to see if they had given any kind of guidance around this. And so uh, they they do say that it's appropriate for the Juris Doctor holder to be addressed as doctor in an academic setting. But as a practical matter, in law schools, we don't. I'm not in a law school. However, I'm, I'm at Belmont, which has a law school, but I'm in our College of Entertainment and Music Business, not in the law school. Mm-hmm. So uh, I suppose if I wanted to shortcut beyond all the background I just gave you to answer your question, I would say um, I hold a doctorate degree um, and I am sometimes referred to as doctor and sometimes not. Well, tell me more about what you do there. Are, so you're an associate professor as well? Correct. So what do you teach? What classes do you teach there? I teach copyright law and I teach uh, music industry contract law. Uh, I also have initiated uh, two classes that are related. Um, One is uh, diversity 
in the film industry and the other is diversity in the entertainment industry, understanding the business of jazz. So uh, those are the core classes that I teach. Those are really fascinating. I bet your students love that jazz one. It was a very popular class because I rotate courses. I can't teach everything every semester. Uh, It's been a while since I've taught that when I really wanted to introduce the diversity in film class, which has also been very well received by students. But yeah, students love the opportunity to have um, a different perspective on the industry than uh, may be readily available. I believe that that's one thing that that class offers. Mm -hmm. Well, for people who don't aren't familiar with Nashville and we are called Music City and I feel like Belmont has been a pioneer in you know breaking through and having so many um, I guess degrees that are given out around the music industry here in town yes Yes. Um, and so I, I love that that Belmont is basically in the heart of Nashville. I mean, it's like you guys are like within walking distance of where these number one country music hits and other hits are being made. And um, it, it's exciting that a student could come to a school like Belmont University and be and want to pursue a music business career and be so close. I bet the internships are amazing there. Yes, this is one of the uh, real advantages of being at Belmont um, and being interested. If you're a student who's interested in the entertainment industry and the music business specifically, uh, we have outstanding relationships with companies who uh, provide internship opportunities as well as job opportunities to students who have studied with us. And so we also have space on Music Row. And for your listeners who don't know what Music Row is, although I suspect most of them do, Music Row is to the music industry what Wall Street is to the finance industry or the financial sector. It is a hub. It's located within a specific neighborhood that's off downtown Nashville. It's not in downtown, but it's not far away. And it is a center for the industry in that there are uh, publishing companies and record companies and performing rights organizations that are all located within a very close proximity. And that kind of geographical uh, centrality has made it very Um, a real conducive atmosphere for folks to do business with each other. And so for students who study in our program, they have access to all of those movers and shakers. um, And our students in turn at all of those organizations, those record labels and publishing companies. And now we have new kinds of entertainment industries because the music business has changed and is continuing to change. So it's not just record labels anymore. Um, But, but, uh, entities that offer a range of services um, for uh, artists and uh, engage students like ours uh, who want to participate in that business. So yeah, that's one of the um, real draws for our program, um, one of the advantages of our program for students. So we have uh, space on Music Row, 34 Music Square East, which is a um, both a classroom facility, but it has historic significance. It houses uh, the Quonset Hut, which is a recording studio, and Columbia Studio, uh, Columbus, Columbia Studio B or A. I always get that mixed up. Um, and uh, both are historic um, recording studio spaces, and uh, you, you would recognize folks who've recorded there. Um, Patsy Klein and and other very well-known, recognizable names who have recorded in those studios. Well, now we own those studios and our students record in those studios and learn on that equipment and are surrounded in that environment and can have access to all of the same kinds of equipment and learn the techniques 
that made those studios so popular and so historically significant. We also own a, another um, commercial studio that is very well known and used by um, folks today called Ocean Way. And Ocean Way is on Music Row, just a few blocks up from the Quonset Hut and um, our classroom space. And uh, again, is uh, anybody, anyone who's anyone has recorded at, uh, at Ocean Way Studios. And so again, our students, that's a commercial working studio. So um, it, it isn't just for our students, anyone who wants and needs recording space records there. Um, and of course they pay for that. Our students have access to the same. So you're, you're absolutely right that we are in the center, the hub of what makes Music City, Music City, and our students have an opportunity to take advantage of that location and the opportunities that it affords. Mm -hmm, absolutely. What have you seen students that once they graduate, where do they end up or what types of jobs or maybe even some success stories that you know of, of these post-grad students that have come to Belmont? So uh, a couple of students that immediately come to mind um, that are all music business graduates. So uh, one is currently at Big Machine. Um, Big Machine is the record label that signed uh, Taylor Swift and um, lots of other notable artists. Uh, and she has a very um, envious position there amongst decision makers. Um, she's super, super sharp and learned much i mean she is who she is and so her sharpness is really is really her but she got her content knowledge and her uh, connection to big machine from being at belmont another one of our students is at naxos which is at classical music um and they don't just do classical music but they do sort of um uh, americana off the beaten path uh, music as well uh, he is there and doing social media marketing uh, for for that company. Um, a, another uh, success story is a student who's gone in a different direction in the entrepreneurial route, which has become really important and a real option for folks who are in the music business because the music business is changing. Digital technology has has really introduce some different business models. And so this is a student who uh, went out and uh, created his own company, which he recently sold for a um, million dollars um, to um, someone who acquired it. And again, I actually had that student in my music industry contract law class. So depending on where you want to go, whether you want to go with the big, uh, very well-known um, kind of entity like a big machine or whether you want to go to a specialty label like Naxos or whether you want to do your own thing and do it successfully with the knowledge that learning the music business yields, we have prepared students to, to do any and all of those things, as well as students who, so those are all students who work on the business side of the industry. They are not artists. They are not performers. They are decision makers. They are uh, logicians. I call them music business logicians. They are strategizers. They understand the industry and are operational uh, in their roles. But we also have students who are actually artists, um, songwriters. We have a songwriting program that's outside the music business program. And those students want music business knowledge, even though they plan to work as artists, uh, as creatives, and they are equipped with the knowledge that keeps them from uh, falling into bad deals or choosing a bad agent or a bad manager or just not understanding what the heck the business is about and being able to leverage that knowledge to be successful and to maximize their success uh, on the artist side. So on that side, we do have um, from our songwriting program, uh, folks who've gotten um, uh, 
really great publishing deals. Um, and I really should have brought more names with me. <laughs> I really should have because uh, we, we really do have uh, a, a number of students who are uh, Grammy nominated, Grammy wow. winning folks on the artistic side as well. Well, send those to me and I will add those to the show notes because I bet people want to know, and I'm sure there are people out there that are interested in coming to Belmont or just are interested in the entertainment and music you know, industry and business side of it all that may, may not even know Belmont even exists. Um, but that we can steer them in the right direction. And, and yeah, big names are, um, just really help to solidify and saying like, this is a great program and, and this is the right place to be for what you want to do. And I love that you, um, we talked earlier and you were saying, I'm always, uh, Keep, I guess, keeping up with the industry, you know, things are moving in different directions. You mentioned digital, but you have written now two books. You're about to release your second book. And it the this last one is called Music Business Careers. And yes. it's so exciting to have a book uh, on this topic. Can you tell me a little bit more about the book? Yeah, I am uh, super excited about the release of this book. Uh, it's a book that I thought about, conceptualized uh, back in 2011. And it is really, it grows out of two things. One is my own story and the stories of the second thing would be the stories of students that I have um, met, taught, uh, advised. And so my story is that I am both a creative, I'm a singer and songwriter, but I'm also someone who is analytical because that's the lawyer part of me. Mm -hmm. I, am, I am both. And as a result of being both, trying to figure out where I would land, where I would work, and where my talents would best fit in the entertainment industry was challenging for me. Should I be a full-time artist or should I go the legal route and keep my legal work within the entertainment industry as an entertainment lawyer? But that's not going to be the same as being on stage or releasing records. And how will I feel about that? And what will I do with music? I want to go that more analytical route. And so what I what I um, what I found when I would talk to students, because I would share my own story and my decision making dilemma, what I found when I would talk to students is that they faced the same dilemma and they became aware of that dilemma when they would talk to someone like me or take my class. They would take my copyright law class or my music industry contract law class and go, wow, I had no idea that the law was this interesting. I actually really kind of like it. It's making me wonder if I should stay on the road I am as a creative or not only do I like this, I'm getting A's in, in this class. I really love the subject matter. I'm connecting with it on a level that I didn't expect to. Now I've got a decision to make uh, that crossroads. And so what the book is about is decision making. So it's, it's not a book that is sort of here are all the different types of music business careers that there, that there are and here's how you interview and here's how you create a resume. This is a book that is about understanding who you are before you launch into a search for a particular position or create your own business if you're going to go the entrepreneurial route. Before you do any of that, there's some inner work to do. And so three chapters in the book deal with calling um, and things like authenticity. And so at the end of every chapter, there are exercises uh, for that kind of inner work and inner exploration and dialogue. And that's what it is. It's exploration to help make decisions based on who you are as this bifurcated self and understanding what's really important to you. So what will you do with music in your life if you decide to go, not just law, but to be, say, the head of an entertainment company or um, 
an artist manager or any of the other kinds of non-artistic professions that support the industry. What will you do if you go in that direction? Because anybody who's musical does not want to leave that part of themselves behind, generally. But then you have people who do, who are able to, and I believe with the help of my book, who are able to see, yeah, I'm, I'm musical, but that's that's not that's not a defining aspect of who I am, and it's not how I want to direct my career. There are other things that are important to me. Mm-hmm. So, um, so it is um, is being published by Taylor Francis uh, Routledge, which is a company that publishes textbooks, and it was prepared to serve two audiences. One is as a textbook. So it can be taught, and I look forward to to teaching this as a class uh, in the in the university and envi- environment because I do think that one of the things that Belmont and other universities can do is to provide some career direction. Um, but it also is a book that can be used for a personal journey, and you're taking that personal journey mm-hmm. through the book. Wow, I think that is going to just do very well with. You know, anybody who's wanting to teach it as a class or to just pick it up and learn about all the different areas of that business and how they go about it and how to break, you know, into it. And and also, uh, you know, I love that you've got that resume, you know, how to do a resume in there, because I think a lot of people need that kind of help. I love that that you are continuing to write and putting things uh i guess in a in one place where they can you know grab it and and get all of the wisdom all the nuggets of wisdom that you have so that's awesome i hope so i hope that uh there there are pieces of my story i also interviewed uh 13 um 13 individuals who are blended like like me, uh, and they tell their stories. In uh, one chapter, covers their stories or pieces of their stories, and then we refer. I refer to them in other chapters um, throughout the book. And so, uh, yeah, I I believe that understanding or at least being familiar with someone else's journey can help you with your own. One clarification, though, and, so, and I may not have been clear in how I was describing the book. I actually don't have information in there about resumes. I'm making the distinction between uh, a book that is that kind of a how-to versus a book that is more uh, an inward journey. Once you identify... Oh, gotcha what it is that you want to do, then you're ready to put together a resume that supports the identity that you identify as a result of being, you know, uh, having an experience with a book like this. Mm -hmm. So sorry if I wasn't clear. Oh, no, that was probably my Yeah, thank you for clarifying that. So Cheryl, you, you probably if you're writing books, you're probably a reader. What book are you reading currently? And it doesn't have to be, I'm sure you you read plenty of industry books. <laughs> I do, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so right now I'm reading um, Michelle Obama's Becoming along with a zillion other women in the United States and probably outside of it um, and thoroughly enjoying it. Um I also, I read a lot of stuff that engages the, you know, inner you. Um, I feel like that's who I've been like as long as I can remember. And so a book that I am rereading is uh, Feeling Good by Dr. David Burns. And it does have a subtitle because Feeling Good could sound like you know, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> something else. <laughs> yeah, it could sound like something else, but but it's it's about feeling emotionally good, and um, it, it has been a life changer for me um, because it it's it's about changing how you are in the world by changing what you think, 
mm. and what you believe. And um, it's been it's been really really helpful. Um, another book that I've sort of started on, but like I never read one thing. I'm reading like four different four things. Different, yeah. Uh, so a book that my sister recommended to me, I'm not going to remember the name of it, but it has something to do in the title. It has something to do with um, uh, Black Girls Read, something about uh, oh. Black Girls Read. Mm-hmm. And it, it's it's an anthology of works, literary works by Black women about being a Black woman. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry, I'll, I'll send you the name of that one yeah, too for the show notes as well. Um, but yeah, and so I'm all over the board. I always want something spiritual to read, but also mm-hmm. something that's motivating and something that's fun. Yeah, too. yeah. So Cheryl, what is the best business advice you've ever gotten? Man, that that's a harder question than it than it might appear to be because I'm constantly consuming that kind of thing. Mm. And it, it all kind of runs together. So Sure, yeah. I would say um so Brene Brown, I recently I could have added that to the list of books that I recently have read. I finished that one. Um Courage to Lead is uh the Brene Brown book that I've most recently read, Courage to Lead. And one thing that was compelling about that book for me and really resonates is this idea of being courageous and taking risks. And what's sort of buried within that thought is uh, being who you are um, because uh, no one else can be in the marketplace who you can be. Mm -hmm. And... uh, the marketplace may need lots of people who can, um, you know, sort of manipulate social media or data or uh, or who can sing. If you're a singer, um, there, there are millions of people out there who have similar gifts, but no one who can offer what you can in the way that you can from the perspective that you can with the experiences that you have. I think that's really powerful when you release that in in the marketplace and don't don't squelch. That's my favorite word, squelch or 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 um, or stifle that, but to release it and have the courage to in the room, say the thing that you're not sure other people want to hear, but it's the thing that you believe needs to be said in that moment. So courage and taking risks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I, I love that. And, and I had a conversation recently with some women. I, I don't know if you know, but I'm the lean in, uh, regional leader for leanin.org here in Nashville for women. And so when we get together and I say, you know, sharpen each other's swords with, you know, getting, uh, getting sharper and linking arms and helping each other, when I hear something like that, I, I always tell them that's the making of a good CEO. That's the making when you do those things, that's how people get ahead is that they're brave enough. They take that courage, they have that courage enough to, to speak it out and to, to let other people hear their ideas and their Mm -hmm. thoughts. If you don't do it, no one's going to know you're going to be hiding under, you know, under a bucket and no one's going to see the potential and, and the amazing ideas that only you have, that only you've been given. Right. So, yes. Or if someone else, uh, sees something similarly, uh, in a similar way, they speak it out and you don't, then you're going to feel like you, uh, should have. Right. um, so we, yeah, we should, we should channel who we are. Yeah. Okay. So last question that I ask all of my, um, Nashville people is what, what is your favorite restaurant in Nashville? So there are many restaurants that I like here and I'm grateful that Nashville has really, since I moved here in 2008, uh, I think there are lots of really cool choices that didn't exist at that time. Mm-hmm. But when I think about my favorite, I think, where do you go the most? Where do you find yourself going back to? 
And that would be Margot's in East Nashville. Oh, yes, yes. Margot's that is old favorite. Is, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's upscale, but it's not inaccessible uh, as far as a price point is concerned. Um, and and uh, the food is always excellent. The ambiance is lovely, and the service is very, very good and what you want when you go to a, a really good restaurant. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah. Well, thank you, Cheryl, so much for talking to us today. And I will make sure to link where people can get the book. And maybe it would be a great uh, gift for someone, you know, one of their um, music lovers or someone who is interested in pursuing a career in music business. So, and thank you for all of the years that you are pouring into these students because it's it's a uh, it's a labor of love I'm sure thank you uh it, it's mutually rewarding I learned so much from them as well thanks for coming on thank you for having me what a great conversation I really enjoyed talking with Cheryl and I loved it that she provides insight into the music entertainment business and where you who is interested in music can find their place in the industry. You can find her book, which I totally recommend, with the link provided in the show notes below or at kareensandifer.com. Also, if you would, please take a few moments to subscribe to the podcast and tell your friends about the show. You can also find us on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Catch my Sunday night productivity tips on Instagram each week as we prepare for an awesome week by doing a few things that will keep us focused and on track. Today's music is by Ben Sound and our sponsors are Audible. You can get a free book by joining with the link provided in the show notes and by Amazon. Thanks so much for listening and keep rising in your story.